Hi and welcome to tutorial 122 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not familiar with uh, this material, then you can go to the website, which is markplex.com, markplex.com, where you'll find a lot more programs and tutorials like this one. So in this one, it's uh, quite a simple tutorial that's going to be talking about the stack class. Now, previously in a lot of my tutorials and programs, I've used the vector class, I've used the dictionary class, but um, not as far as I remember have I used the stack class. So let's just look at it and work out some of the differences. So probably one of the main uh, differences with the stack class is that we're somewhat limited in the things that we can do. I'm going to be demonstrating these. So we can clear uh, the stack, we can create a stack of course, but then what we can do is peek, we can see what the element is at the top of the stack without removing it. We can remove the element at the top of the stack using pop and we can insert an element at the top of the stack using push and we're going to be uh, demonstrating all of those. Now if we just compare that with the vector class, you'll see that we have uh, more flexibility here because with the vector we can access elements using an index and uh, if we look at the, the methods that are available, um, for I just mentioned we can access an element at a particular uh, index, but we can also erase elements between two indexes. We can erase an element at a particular index, or we can even insert an object repeatedly at a specified position. So there are some differences between vector and stack, but I think it's useful just to be familiar with the stack class. So what I'm going to do is just go through a quick tutorial. It's going to start with a, a blank tutorial and then just each time uh, I'm going to add some more material and just discuss it. Okay, so first thing I want to do is add the namespace. Now the collections namespace includes the stack. It also includes the vector. So here we have, um, we're, we're setting up our variables and we're declaring um, a stack called my stack and we're call calling another one my stack clone which I'll show you later and then we've, we've also got a string there now what I want to do is run this program just once uh, on the program when the program starts because um, we don't need it to be running on every bar and what I've done to start with in this so we're going to use a once begin end clearing the print log and uh, I'm initializing the stack so we're setting up a, a new instance of the stack class called my stack. Now having initialized this new stack called my stack, we're going to be adding an element to the stack. And we do that using the syntax. So it's my stack dot push. And uh, as always, if you um, press the dot, you'll see the options there. So you can say, okay, push and um, double click it. And we're going to add to it element one. And uh, this is just a string, which uh, put in quotes there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look into the stack and say, okay, what is the element at the top of the stack? Now, of course, we'd expect that to be element one. And how many elements are in the stack? So before we do that, I just need to end the begin end. So I'm going to verify it. And I've already got this applied to a chart. So we'll see, yes, uh, the peeking into the stack, the element at the top is element one. That's the one we just added. And the number of elements in the stack are one. Okay, so far so good. So what we want to do now is add something else to the stack. So it's going to add something else to the stack. We're going to call it element or we're going to add uh, a string again, element, except this time it's called element two. And again, we're going to look what is the element at the top of the stack and how many elements are in the stack. So we would expect that to be element two and the elements in the stack should be two. So I'm just going to verify it and go to the program, which should have updated. And yeah, so, so we, the first time we got element one, number of elements in the stack, one, element two, number of elephant, elements, elephants, elements in the stack, two. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do the next one. So we're going to add our third element and it's again a string, element three and we're going to print the information. So let's verify that. We should see element one is the first one we added, two, three, and then the number of elements is now three in the stack. Okay, so the, the final thing I want to do in this little section is clone the array. So we'll see why in a moment, but uh, let's just insert that. And to clone 
we use the following syntax. So it's mystack.clone. And again, if you were unsure of that, you could just put the, uh, the period and select clone. And we need to uh, type it as type stack. So it's not going to show any difference in our output read, but um, we've we've done a clone and uh, we've stored that in a new stack called my stack clone. So we've got two stacks going. We've got one called my stack. We've now got one called my stack clone. OK, the next thing we want to do is try removing an element from the stack. And we're going to do that using my stack dot pop. And what we're going to do at the same time here while we're doing this is we're going to store the value that we've removed in a string because we know it's a string. So we've we've made it to string and we've stored it in a string. And then we're going to print what the value was that we've just removed, what the uh, value at the top of the uh, stack is, and also the number of elements in the stack. So again, I'm just going to verify that and looking at the results, we'll see that the element in the string, the one that we've just removed is element three. That makes sense because that is uh, previous to, to doing the removal that's at the top of the stack. And now the element at the top of the stack is element two. And of course, because we've now removed an element from the stack, we've now got two elements in the stack. Now, the next thing we want to do is remove all elements from the stack. And we do that using following syntax. So simply my stack dot clear. So this is going to take all the elements away. And just to show that it's done that, we're going to be printing the number of elements in the stack after clear, which of course should be zero. So let's go ahead and see what we get. Okay, print my stack count after clear, number of elements in the stack after clear, zero. Okay, that makes sense. But you may remember that we took a clone of our stack, which we call my stack clone. So what I want to do now is just see what's in the clone. And we can do that by using the pop again as type string and uh, also printing the number of elements. So let's just verify that and let's just see if the information has been correctly stored in the clone. And indeed it has element two, or rather element three, two and one. As we've removed each element each time that we print it, we end up with a clone with zero elements. Now, so far you've probably noticed that all the elements that we've added to this stack have been strings. Well, they don't have to be strings. And in fact, they could be objects. So what I'm gonna do is just add an object to the stack just to um, show that that doesn't generate errors. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add to my stack, my stack clone. And uh, then we're just going to print to string. So it should just demonstrate that there is uh, an object stored and the number of elements in the stack should result in a value of one. So let's verify that. And indeed, so we, we see that we have got a stack stored in the stack and the number of elements in the stack is now one. So I hope that's been uh, an interesting introduction to stack. If you want the program Gold Pass members, then the uh, the program is free for you to download and uh, you can experiment with it and familiarize yourself with it further. Anyway, thank you very much for your attention.